right. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Tom Murphy, and this is Trinidad Now on Trinidad Times Television. With me today is Joe Bonato. Joe, thank you. Well, this is segment two. I'm sorry. You were already introduced in the last segment. Right. It's been a little while. I'm a little rusty, so so be, be patient with me. Okay. Okay, so th this segment, we're going to talk exclusively about economic development. Okay. Um, and I'm asking everybody generally the same questions. So, Joe, what do you think is the most pressing issues facing Trinidad? Wow, that's a tough question. There's, there's several issues that are pressing us. Uh, I think in our lack of jobs that we have here is, is the most important one. Uh, you're talking about economic development. Uh, I think now that uh, all our entities as far as economic development and the tourism board and SCRT and everybody working together has really helped improve and got our voice out to out to the world there where we're here in Trinidad and we want to welcome people here and we want to welcome b new businesses here. Uh, I believe Jonathan Taylor, I guess that's, that's his last name, is uh, is doing a good job. He's a, he hustles a lot for the economic development and uh, yeah, uh, my vision, my vision is to see more little businesses come into Trinidad. Uh, I would rather like to see 10 little businesses come in and that hire 15 to 20 people rather than getting a big, huge business in that hires 200, 300 people and uh, when something happens, we lose those jobs. So the most important thing we have to really look at is that, and I stated this ever since I've been on council, and I believe council has made a mistake in those years that I sat there was that we always depended on one business. We depended on our mines, we depended on our drilling, now we're dependent on marijuana. Uh, we just can't really do that, Tom, uh, because when something happens to those industries and they collapse, we're in the same boat that we were 11, 12 years ago. So uh, you're talking about economic development. I wish to, I like to see more small businesses come in and, uh, you know, and try to help this community, really. Okay. And, and there's more questions along that type, so it, it, you're going to think I've already answered that. It's just a similar type question rephrased a different way, so as, as we move along with this. Okay. But, but thinking, this is more of a follow-up question rather than the next question. So, uh, you know, we had coal mining, we've had cattle, uh, boom and bust, oil and gas. Um, how, who's responsible for not um, getting more different types of businesses into the community? Well, that's what I just said. I, I, the council, the council really looks at things like this, but our economic development is responsible for doing this. We we have to get reach out and touch people. We can't sit there and just say, well, we have this much land and we're going to promise these people. We have to reach out to them and say, do you want to come to Trinidad? We hear that you want to you start a new business. We'll welcome you. We could try to give you some incentives to start you off in business. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's everything that everybody has to have the right communications, Tom. If you don't have communication between economic development, tourism, council, mayors, whatever, nothing, nothing's going to get done that way. So, so I think it's a fair statement to say that the hiring of an economic development director like Jonathan has been a plus to the city? It, it seems like it's been helping us, yes. It seems like it's been helping us. Uh, John, like I say, Jonathan has really hustled. Uh, there's a couple things I, I didn't agree on of, uh, uh, with Jonathan a couple times, but... Uh, yeah, he's a hustler, and, okay. uh, and I think that'll help us. Okay. Um, and again, I'm, I'm asking questions. I'm asking some follow-up because I, I want to be. That's fine. I want. I want to ask the You know, everybody that's running, mostly the same questions. There's okay. going to be some deviation. Okay. But but I think it's fair to 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 try to ask generally the same. So the the next question uh, is to describe your vision for the city of Trinidad for the next four years. In your situation, really, you only have two years left. Whether right. you win. The, the mayor seat or if you stay on council. Right. But even that you can project because what you do now may be in place in four years. What do you, where do you see the city of Trinidad four years from now? Well, you know, like I say, this is gonna be an important election, Tom. This is really probably one of the most important elections that, I've, that I sat through. Uh, we have had 
so many things that we have to look at as far as our infrastructure, our water lines, our gas lines, and stuff like this. In the two years that I have left before I'm term limited, I would like to see, and we are, right now the council is, and the city staff is working on replacing our water lines and uh, uh, downtown area down here where we're gonna replace our water and sewer and gas lines down here that extends to, I think, to your street, up to 4th Street and back up to High Street or like that, but yeah, that's the envision I have. I wanna see where our infrastructure is taken care of. And I, when, you know I worry about water a lot. Uh, we lose 40% of our water from our water treatment plants coming down. I wanna see that, and I'm not saying we could do this in two years time or three, but we have to look at this and get this fixed. And that's the most important vision I have for the city of Trinidad. Well, Joe, I think I was at your retreat at Monument Lake, and actually I think the the plan that Gabe England had was it 15, 20, 25 year plan? Right. So maybe even, well, I hope we're both around here, you know, in that amount of time, but God only knows that one. That's right. So, um, so the next question, Joe, is how familiar are you with the city budget? City budget I look at quite a bit. Uh, it, you know, and like I said before, I have learned a lot from, from other councilmen and from some good mayors. And uh, what happens is we always have to have a healthy utility fund. We got to keep that fund good and tight because everything that we do comes out of the utility funds. And one mayor told me before, Joe, whatever you do, you have a healthy utility fund and you have to have a healthy reserve because if something drastically happens there, that reserve fund is gonna kick in. And, and I see things, Tom, that, that worry me about this. We only have like one, one million dollars in our uh, reserve funds. And if we have a disaster, like a, a, a sewer line break or something like that, one million dollars isn't gonna get you very far. So it looks like to me that we gotta really keep a healthy utility fund and that reserve fund, never touch that reserve fund until it's necessary. Uh, that's what really bothers me. And, uh, and as far as the budget goes, uh, you know, I, I study it a lot, I look at it, and uh, I just hope that like, there might be some money left over in our budget where we can give our city workers uh, a little raise, they haven't had a raise, in, four or five years since I've been on council because we didn't have the funds to do it. And, uh, and I always said that without the city workers, you don't have a city. So maybe we could you know, use some, some type of funding there that uh, on the budget that we have to give our, uh, our city workers a little raise also. Uh, so a couple follow-up <laughs> questions. Um, everything comes from utilities. I have almost a 16,000 square foot building here. My utilities Right. Um, we have uh, struggled at times uh, to make the payments and things are difficult. One of the things that have put us as, as, and myself as one of the people that pays that utility fund is ARPA. Mm -hmm. Now ARPA in your time went from a $66 million project to $172 million right. project that is now torn apart or Dude, being torn apart. Gone. How much responsibility you and other council members should you take for for that happening? Well, I think years ago when when, uh, when ARPA was created and uh, it sounded like a good deal at that time that we we uh, follow up with ARPA and then it, all of a sudden this uh, this came to being that it didn't, the power plant down in Lamar was, uh, wasn't gonna be and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it, you know, in those years, you know, we don't have a crystal ball and say, yeah, we're gonna do this and everything in the future is gonna be good. Uh, but right now, uh, Councilman Miles has been our representative and uh, Mr. Favic has been our representative as far as ARPA and uh, I believe Michelle has done a great job and Mr. Favic doing what they're doing and they're still, they're still under debate, you know what I'm saying? Right, still but you talk about not having a crystal ball, but do you accept some of the responsibility for, for that happening or? and the rest of the council that was seated at the time? Well, like I say, Tom, uh, at that time, you know, we thought everything was gonna be fine with ARPA. Uh, 
uh, Mr. Riorta was our mayor at that time, and uh, Mr. Bernali was our, our utility superintendent, and uh, it seemed like everything was, was going to be good. But uh, yeah, I, you could say that maybe we did have to accept some of that responsibility. But right now, we're, we're uh, with this council and with Mrs. Uh, Councilman Miles, is that, is that now we're trying to retract and try to help our people with the utility bill. But, so, uh, you know. And actually, I even tried to, myself and Steve Bolton tried to use the marijuana fees. Right, I, I remember that. That, that, right. wasn't, that wasn't legal. Right. One other thing you said, and this is still a follow-up question, is giving more wages to the city workers. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the jobs that have been created here with the marijuana industry are not high-paying jobs. Right. Um, it, it seems to me a $30,000 or $35,000 salary is pretty good. In the city, I would say probably the average is more in the $40,000 range. In a community like Trinidad, isn't that a, a $40,000, $45,000? And that's not even talking about the supervisor level. They're at the seventy, eighty, ninety, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 level. Those are pretty good salaries, aren't they, for Trinidad? Well, you have to really look at, the, at, at each department and what's going on in, with each department. Uh, uh, you get like our parks department, that's the lowest wage that's, that, uh, that uh, is paid. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of cutbacks, and I'm gonna say this, in my opinion, when Gabe England was here, uh, there's been a couple guys that, I know of one person that passed away and never replaced his job on the parks department, and different things like that, but I, like I say, Tom, you know, in a five-year span, if we can't, as a council, find a little bit of money to give them a 20 cent, 25, 30 cent raise per hour, uh, you know, there's something wrong. I really do. But, I mean, you, you're but, saying, you're talking 40, 45,000, which is a pretty good job, but not all of them make that type of money. Right. You know, but, so. But that's, that's probably even below average right, of what the city right. is. Um, and the reality is it being in business is if the money's not there, you don't get a raise. That's and considering right. the economic times That's right. we've gone through. And, and now, really, one of the pluses has been the marijuana revenue, mm -hmm. um, almost $2 million last year. Right. That's a big boost to our, our community. Um, it, we're, we'll get into that later. But okay. here's the next question, though, because uh, otherwise I'll just start doing all follow-up questions. Okay. What, what are the city's main revenue sources and expenditures? Uh, just our bonds and stuff like that. It, uh, we have to really look at uh, at what's happening right now. Uh, we generate our mostly our funds through the utilities. That's where most of our, our funds come from, and uh, and that's what brought brings me back to the utility funds. We gotta have to keep that so uh, really healthy. Um, just different things, uh, taxes, your sales tax and stuff like that. That's our main generation between those two things. Okay, those revenue. What about right. our, what are our main expenditures? <sighs> Man, you're talking main expenditures. Mm, that's a tough question for me. I don't know. Okay. No, well, let, let me, and I'm, I, I want to I read this so I, so I say this right. Um, uh, industry recruitment is very difficult for rural communities, especially ones where healthcare education and workforce development systems are, are below par. Um, what type of business would you like to attract to Trinidad? Well, you know, before the, all the action with uh, the industrial park out here, uh, I thought that was a gold mine for the city of Trinidad. We had, we had transportation there. We had a lot of land there in which uh, we could have used properly. Uh, uh, I would have liked to see some kind of manufacturing come in here. And I don't care if it's making wool gloves or, or, or making uh, a pair of socks or whatever, but we had everything there that we could have utilized as a, as a big factory. Now, with the, with, the, with the sale, with the marijuana out there, it's, it's, it's kind of hard, and I think it's kind of hard to attract businesses there because you got so many marijuana things out in the industrial park. Um, there's just, that's what I would have liked to see, but as far as uh, other things, we, you know, we had this tractor store that opened up in, in Raton. We had a tractor store that opened up in, I believe, Rocky Ford or Alamosa. 
and here's Trinidad, right in the middle of everything, and we can't we can't get a store like that. Why? Isn't isn't that just really similar to Big R? I think the type of store that it is. It's uh, yeah, it's kind of something like that, Tom. It's just, it's a little bit smaller right. than the Big R, but okay. you know they uh, with all the ranchers and farmers and stuff we have around here that you know we could. Right. Probably could ha use have that. you ever, Joe, being on council, uh, and now that we have Jonathan Taylor, though, in all the time that you uh, are on council, did you ever go to any trade shows or anything that where you might try to seek out a manufacturer I, to bring them to Trinidad? I uh, about two years ago, I uh, I was in Colorado Springs, and I did go into the Home Depot up there, and I asked a couple people up there if there was a supervisor that I could talk to, and. Uh, I talked to this gentleman, and like I say, this has been about two years ago, and I said, would you be interested, would Home Depot be interested in locating into Trinidad? And his honest answer to me was, you know, Mr. Bonato, that uh, we don't have the population to support that. I mean, it's such a big, huge, tremendous store. You know, it's things like that, and that's what, what gets me back again to, to the smaller businesses that we have, you know. we. You know, maybe we can attract big, big outfits, but uh, little ones we could. Right. Well, just like we used to have a model lumber, where we have Trinidad right. builders. If you brought in uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, who's that going to hurt? Yeah, that's right. And they're local small businesses like me that you know we every day is a challenge. Right. You so bet. bringing in chain stores probably at this point may not be the best choice. Mm -hmm. But um, the other. Uh, thing that we have going on uh, is growth in the tourism industry and over the last two years it's really been outstanding. Do you support the tourism economy? Oh absolutely Tom. I mean uh, just look what we had this whole summer. We had uh, Santa Fe Trail Days, we had the Blues Fest, we had the, the, the Mr. Woods with his cars down here. Uh, that, uh, you know that attracts a lot of tourism. It's, it's great. Uh, I was really just like last Saturday, I went down to the farmer's market uh, in Chimino Park, and it was packed. It was packed with people. And there's people, I, like I said, I lived here all my life, and I didn't even know some of these people because they were just from tourists, and they heard about the farmer's market, they heard about the Blues Fest, they heard about the Santa Fe Trails, and it's wonderful, yeah. We need tourism. We have to promote tourism. Without the tourism, you know, it's tough. Okay. So, Joe, uh, if you're the mayor or as a council member, what are you going to do to help uh, continue to promote the tourism industry? I think just like what, what we have going on now with the art space and stuff like this, uh, uh, we have the, the Miners Museum. It's wonderful. You have to really, you know, pass out these leaflets and just word by mouth. And in a small little town like this, everything is word by mouth, and that's what generates all this you know, coming and going. So, you know, you got like your motels that that have out flyers and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what it would, would help. Yeah. Okay. And, and maybe I've asked this, and I'm just it's maybe just rephrasing it. The city council created economic development two years ago. Uh, what is your idea for economic development for like that? You, it's just rephrasing it another way. You've kind of answered it, but if you just you know answer it again. <laughs> well, it's like I say, you know. It, all our entities have to work together, and the economic development is part of this. Uh, uh, like I, Jonathan's been there; uh, he has been to our our uh, chamber meetings and stuff like that. And it, it helps; it helps to get the word out. So, and like I say, I'm, okay. I'm proud of Jonathan on that. Okay. Um, last year, uh, city economic development focus was on stabilizing our downtown to create an attractive atmosphere for commercial businesses. We, we they're doing rental assistance, they're doing uh, facade redevelopment grants, um, they're doing Main Street patios. Um, they also did the entertainment district, right. of which the, the Blues Fest had a very successful pre-fest the, the night before. That's right. uh, what's your thought on all of those uh, things that the economic development has done? I think they're all wonderful. You know, you're talking about uh, I mentioned the Blues Fest and, I'm, uh, and the downtown, the entertainment district. Uh, those are wonderful things that, that attract a lot of people. Uh, uh, the patios outside, you know, a lot of people have complained to me about them, that they're kind of a hazard or stuff like this. But I think, I think, uh, you know, people do enjoy that, Tom. You know, go out and 
you could sit outside and enjoy your meal and you want an adult a beer whatever you know I don't think that's hurting anything but uh, yeah it's it's wonderful it, I really I'm really surprised with all that that's taken place okay um, in the last couple of years in 2015 our our vacancy rate was probably 61 percent downtown um, in 2017 it's down to 29 percent what would you attribute that to well it's like you said uh, you know with the, with the help of Dola, with the help of Chaffa, uh, we got these grants uh, to come in and, and start this uh, space to create. And also that it seems like more people are interested in, in our little little uh, shops. And we just got to just stand up and support them as a, as a community. You know, we, we got like the, the Taste Me, what's that little place down there? Treat Me, Taste Me or whatever treat it me, is. Treat Me, you treat know, me. Treat Me. Treat me, treat me, uh, at ever. It's uh, you know, uh, those are uh, small little shops, but those are those are the people that make make big businesses, you know, survive. If it wasn't for those little ties, mm -hmm. those those help. So okay. Um, well, the the big issue right now, and you had a retreat recently up at the um, La Quinta, um, and I've heard some comments that the marijuana money has already been decided how it's going to be spent. Where do you think the marijuana money should be spent? Well, you take, for instance, right now, uh, we had that, that, that major break in uh, our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, that's the big main sewer line that goes into the treatment plant with the sewer and water. Uh, we were called to an emergency meeting because that happened and it was going to cost the city $63,000. Again, uh, there I go again. Talk about utility funds. I was really, I was really kind of upset that the money came out of the utility fund instead of using that marijuana money to fix fix this main line. Uh, we're talking uh, about the sewer line and stuff like that. Is you know, a year and two years ago, I helped the water department, sewer department, get a new camera, $10,000 camera, which indeed uh, checks the sewer lines. And uh, and I think that since CHM2 inspected our whole water treatment plant, they should have inspected that water line too. But uh, that's that's another story. But that some of that marijuana money could have been used for that okay. and kept our utility fund. Well, it, when the decisions come to be made about how the money is going to be spent, though that is a council decision, all the council members, you know, by vote, a right. majority vote. Right. So whether you're in the majority or the minority, shouldn't you, if the majority of the council votes to say we're going to spend money on this, this, and this, isn't it your obligation after a vote to, to move along and agree with that and support well, it? Well, there, there you go again, Tom. Uh, the most popular vote isn't always the right vote. That's what I believe in. And, uh, and when this came up, as far as the, the dog kennel, $400,000, I looked at that and I just shook my head because, uh, you know, I, I know we need a dog kennel. I'm not against Noah's Ark, but the reason is is that, man, $400 is a lot of money. 400000 400, is a lot right. of money. And the city's giving them the land, which is by the swimming pool, by the power plant. The city's going to build the outside shell. So you tell me, how come we have to pay so much for, for a dog shelter, 400000 Plus, I hear it's going to go maybe more, more than a million-dollar shelter. But uh, when marijuana was passed and stuff like this, I thought everybody, when the council passed it, I thought everybody would get a piece of the pie. But when you look at this, it, it, it was really shocking to me. Right. And like I say, I'm not against Noah's Ark. It's just a point that... You're talking about other entities like Ada, Chamber, the uh, senior citizens that need some well, help too. Uh, several questions now. Um, in having done construction myself, uh, I know as, as one of the, I'm trying to think of the <coughs> oldest D'Amato brother, um, as he told me when I was Joe? doing this stuff. Joe not, was it or Louis. Louis, Louise and uh, Carl? Carl. You know, when, when I was doing this stuff and I was, I was a bit younger, 20 some years ago, in my 30s, um, he said, Tom, whatever you're doing, you know, double it and add even more. Right. Um, you know, when it comes to construction, so I can understand 
you know, the initial sticker shock that you're saying 400,000 is a lot of money. But when you get into construction, it, it's generally under bid and it's always more. That's, I think, any lumber yard or whatever will tell yeah, you. Yeah, I agree with that. that that's, that's the problem. The, 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 the other question, and there was two others, the other question is, again, I'll ask, when the council makes a decision on how to spend money and the majority votes, doesn't it take away from what you're doing when you're after the fact saying, I don't agree with this, I don't like it? Tom, you probably have known me for a long time. And that's just the way I am. Uh, I vote to what I believe is right. I'll vote until somebody tells me I'm wrong. So, you know, sometimes they look at me as maybe I'm the bad guy of the council. But, you know, like I say, I'm not a bad guy. I just vote the way I see the vote. And it, it's not hurting the council. You know, it kind of hurts me when it's always six to one, 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 and it gets kind of tiresome. But, hey, if I vote, the most popular vote isn't always the right vote. Okay. Uh, um, okay, so what are we going to do? I'm going to shift gears because I, I could, we could talk about this at length for an hour really? probably, and I, and I don't want to draw this out okay. much longer. What are we going to do when the marijuana money goes away? That's what I was telling you. Here we go, relying on one more business. You know, it's what are we going to do? Right. What are we going to do? We look, we look at, say, say something. Uh, we look at New Mexico, or we look at uh, Oklahoma. If uh, New Mexico and Oklahoma uh, says marijuana is going to be legal, uh, that's going to take a lot away from us. And like you said, only the strong survive. Uh, it's a difficult question, yes, and there we are back step one. Like I told you, we're relying on one business, and we're, we can't. We've right. got to promote business while we can. Okay. Um, in the 12 years or so of my filming, I, I could probably say and I've missed the number of oh, meetings on one hand. Yeah. Now, the next question, and I'm embarrassed, because you had a special meeting last night on Monument Lake, and it slipped my mind, and I, 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 no I, problem. I no, it bothers me. But that's the next question, and I might know what your answer is. So, what is the solution for Monument Lake? Clearly, it needs a lot of money, more than what the city probably has available to fix it up appropriately. Right. So, what what did you guys discuss last night, and what what are you going to do? Well, I, like I always told you, Tom, there's two two entities in our town that that really attract tourists. And number one's our golf course, number two is Monument Lake. Getting back with uh, Monument Lake, uh, we did have a meeting last night. Uh, four, of pe four people applied for it. Uh, two of them showed up at the, at the meeting last night. And we did discuss this, and uh, there's a lot of work that has to be done up there. We have, uh, we have set aside $300,000 for a new bathhouse up there, which I think is critical to bring people in up there. Uh, listen to, uh, I listened to Mr. Mondragon and I listened to, I believe, Mr. Russell. Uh, they, they all have good ideas of what they plan to do. But like you said, yes, uh, our, the city's it's really tight and it's hard for us to get the money to do that, but we need to keep that. We cannot let Monument Lake go, no matter what we can. We, it's, it's a tourist attraction. There's a lot of work that has to be done up there uh, Mr. Rob, to me, uh, done a wonderful job in his stand up there, and uh, yeah, we we just have to do this. But where the money is going to come from, we're just going to have to debate and see. Maybe marijuana money. Mar mar maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. All right. Last question of this segment. Um, through the years, you've had many meetings um, with the county. Um, what successes have you had from those meetings? And I have them on tape, going back to 2005. Mm -hmm. And what failures, and, and why haven't we done a better job? So what successes have we had? What failures have we had? And what can we do in the future? What do you see as far as city-county collaboration? Successes, failures, and collaboration. Well, you, you, like I say, Tom, ever since I've been on council, it seemed like uh, the city and the county just couldn't mash together. Uh, there's a couple, c 
couple of years there that we have tried with the county and the county has tried with us and it just never seems to amount to anything. Uh, if I was, if I become the new mayor, I, I, I re really look at getting with the county commissioners, talk over problems with the county commissioners. Uh, the city has helped the district attorney right now to give them some money to help, you know, promote stuff like that in the district attorney's office. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we, we try to do things and it's like anything else that it always goes back to the back burner. We, we really haven't followed up with either, either one of them has followed up. And I think, like I said, this with this important election coming up is that, you know, we have to, we have to utilize both entities. We have to come together as one and, and, and try to work things out. Uh, we never had too much success with really the county and, it, and it's a shame, I, I wish we could have. Okay. Well, Joe, this wraps up the second segment. We're gonna okay. lead into the third here in just a second, but uh, we're gonna take a minute. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tom Murphy. This is Trinidad Now on Trinidad TV. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Tom Murphy, and this is Trinidad Now on TP TV, Channel 71. With me today is current mayor, Phil Rico. Phil, segment two, thank you again okay. for joining me. Sure. Uh, this is uh, a course on economic development, most okay. of these questions. So starting out, um, I'm going to read these so that I go through with all the candidates, and it's essentially the same, sure. uh, except for follow-up questions. So right now, uh, uh, Phil, what do you think are the most pressing issues facing Trinidad? Economic development, just bringing, try to bring in some kind of industry into Trinidad, which is the hardest thing to do. Uh, one of the things that I think is helping, though, we are bringing something in with the uh, space to create program, which we just got allocated the dollars for, which I think is a tremendous boost. And I think we've, that in itself will, I think, try to bring jobs into Trinidad and bring people in. It'll be, a, it'll be, be Trinidad will, be, will become more attractive to people uh, from what I can see. Well, as we talked about, um, let's say marijuana bus, um, what are we going to, what are we going to do if, if uh, that goes away? You know, one of the things that, one of the things that I know that Trinidad has been resilient about is staying afloat even in good times as well as bad times. We're, we do need to look beyond the marijuana industry. We know that there's going to be a time frame where uh, maybe New Mexico may adopt it, which at that time we'll probably see some drifting maybe to uh, New Mexico, probably not all of it because people will always want to be able to what I call get a refill. Mm -hmm. So when they come into Trinidad, you know, they're going to want to have, so there'll be a certain number of limit, a certain number of Trinidad. A lot of people ask, will the gas industry come back? Well, the gas industry may come back, but that gas industry per however they sell it has got to get to get up to the price where it's uh, good enough to be, for them to start drilling again. But we need to continue to look for other revenue sources that will sustain us. Is that uh, other type of growing type of facilities beyond besides the uh, besides the marijuana industry? Will it be grow facilities for let's say fruits and vegetables? To that's kind of become a big thing in a lot of communities, where people are, are uh, 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 growing facilities would go in and they'll grow their facility their fruits and veg not veg not fruits so much but vegetables for a community. That's becoming a big thing across the country. I'm not sure if you've seen that, mm -hmm. but I've heard that that is happening quite a bit. We need to, our economic development, uh, we need to push that real hard to go out and look for other revenue sources. Uh, one of the things that I understand, and that was, I, I go, I refer to Gabe England when he was here, because I had several conversations with him in that year and a half that, I was, that he was here while I was mayor. And he said, for every 100, uh, people or industries that you may try to, or you may find that look at Trinidad, you might get one. So it, the, the, the percentages are pretty low. So we just need to keep, continue to hit that pavement to try to find that one. Well, it sounds like to me, and this is more of a follow-up question, it sounds like you've done some research. You've, yes. been, you've, been, you've been looking into oh, yes. opportunities. Oh yes, we've been looking at opportunities uh, that are out there. There are some possibilities which I can't say at this point in time. But we are doing some, we're trying to attract some industry into Trinidad. Like I said, it takes that, maybe we get that one. And this is one thing I've always said, if you attract one, I think others will follow. Because then you'd be, they know that you've attracted something. So I think something else may follow behind that either 
something totally different or just become attractive uh, in that same venue or whatever you attract. Okay. This is a follow-up question, uh, deviated a little bit, and, and maybe you can uh, answer this or not, but is there anything happening with Cuckoo Canyon? No. No. People, we've since I've been mayor, we've probably had four different people, I think three or four different uh, people that have come down and looked at it, but because of the mess that it's in, it's so entangled. Uh, the, the city of we as the city of Trinidad, have had to hire uh, attorneys to try to untangle the mess that's out there, and I think once they see the position that it's in, they kind of shy away. So until they get that completely untangled and we get someone down here to say, yes, I can do something with it, nothing will happen. What, was urban renewal possibly looking at it? That was something that urban, yes, urban renewal had a, and I think that may still be in the back of their mind, but it, it's, a, it's, it's a huge project. And there's a lot of legal issues. There are a lot of legal issues that have to get uh, straightened out before I think it becomes free and clear. Right. Because first of all, they owe a tremendous amount of taxes to the Honey District. Uh, uh, they're behind in, in payment for the Honey mm -hmm. District, which is the Honey District hurting because they don't have that revenue coming to them. Uh, okay. Um, next question. Um, you're, uh, the mayor's seat is for two years. My question yes. when I wrote this uh, was thinking about city council members for, for four. Right. But if you en envision it, uh, what, describe your vision for the city of Trinidad for the next four years. Let's say, assuming that you were reelected again after this yeah. next term, what do you see, what would you like to see four years from now? Well, let me give you a good something. Last year, uh, I wanted to have a retreat, which we did have at, uh, where we have that? I think it was at Mont Carmel. Lake? At Mont Carmel. Mon oh, yeah. And uh, the facilitator that we had asked each one of us council people what we envisioned in five years my vision is, if you look back to probably 2005 to 2007, I think we had a population of around 10,000 people. We lost some because of all of the loss of jobs to, from the gas industry. My thought was that within five years from last year, I would like to see Trinidad with a population of about, five, of about 12,000 people. And because of the influx of people that we're seeing right now, I can really project seeing that that could be a possibility. With the space to create program that, or the space to create uh, project that we have going on, it's de it's going, it has developed a lot of interest, not only in Trinidad, but across the state, but also in other parts of the country. So I think that that's kind of my vision, but also to bring us some more development to Trinidad where people do not have to leave Trinidad for buying clothes, buying groceries, more groceries, uh, and then other items like that. Maybe what we should do right now is go down to Houston with flyers and to Florida and say, you want to get away from <laughs> hurricanes? <laughs> you know, we have an ideal, ideal situation. Really, as a matter of fact, if you look back uh, when Katrina hit, uh, a lot of people moved out of uh, Louisiana. As a matter of fact, I talked to a lady Saturday who is still here from Louisiana, and she likes it here. She thought right. she'd go back after the, you know, it all straightened out, but she likes Trinidad. Right. So I think with everything that's happening uh, in Houston, everything that hap that's happening in Florida, whether a lot, a lot of people don't believe in climate change, I think a lot of it may be induced by us. There's a lot more people, there's a lot more vehicles on the road, there's, you know, there's just a lot more methane that's being produced by us, by the animals that are out there, by the gas that we have. So they're talking that the sea levels are rising. We're seeing all these drastic floods and hurricanes and everything across the world. So I think once people begin to see that all this, all these uh, climate changes and things are happening, I think they're going to be moving more inland. I think Trinidad, I think uh, Trinidad and Colorado as a whole is is prime target. As a matter of fact, this is something that I do know. In 2015, 100,000 people moved into the state of Colorado. Really? Yes. Oh. And two, I don't know what the numbers are in 2016. I haven't heard that yet. Right. I talked to someone upstate a month ago. They were saying 8,000 people are moving into Denver every month at this point in time. The projection is that in the next 10 to 15 years, an additional 1 million people will move into the state of Colorado. 
and the majority of them will uh, uh, settle along the Plain Range. Right. That is the projection from what I'm from what the Office of Economic Development is looking at. Uh, legislators are looking at this. We people are looking at this very seriously. Right. I, I don't know if you remember the book Centennial, which was about Colorado. I think it was yes. James Mishner, um, early '80s, and I think one of the the projections that they said, you know, in they were predicting, if you went back and looked at it, you know, the growth that we were going to have is water was an issue. Um, it is. And I, I didn't include this um, in my questions, but thinking about this as facilitators, how are we with water? You know, we, who, I, I talked, I, forget, I always forget his name, is he takes care of the North Lake Dam and projects up there. Talk, right. I was talking to him yesterday, and we were talking about water. And we are one of two places in Colorado that had excess water. Right. Everybody else is kind of struggling for water right now. Uh, I know that several years ago, Aurora bought all that water from, I think, uh, La not Lahana, the Rocky Ford, and it dried up some land, which was unfortunate. Well, because of all this growth that's going on in the Denver area, they are now wanting more water. They've taken water from the western slope over the past several years. The western slope has said no more. Right. So now they're looking at trying to get water from Wyoming and bring it into Denver. Right. So they're struggling for water. Uh, Pueblo and Trinidad are the two communities that have excess water. This is what I was telling the gentleman right. I talked to yesterday. Pueblo and Trinidad have excess water. Right now. Uh, a couple of things. I know Mike Valentine has addressed it to... Uh, um, talk to Mr. Bonato and say, okay, look, here's exactly how much we have. Right. And so it was clear, I think it was last November, December, or whatever, you know, it was really pretty profound, really, how much water we have. Um, probably 10 years ago, I would say the county actually tried to get a one-cent sales tax, mm -hmm. or uh, I think it was a sales tax. And I interviewed uh, Gene uh, Aiello mm -hmm. at the time, and he explained to me because they were – I think at that time using scare tactics to say, you know, if we don't do this, um, Aurora's going to come take it from us. And Gene had a large history of water involvement. Mm -hmm. And he said, look, it, it doesn't happen like that. They no. can't just come. No. We're a couple water tables or whatever it was away, and it's a long, involved, complex process. Mm -hmm. So it's reassuring because, again, we don't exist without water. It's reassuring to know that um, we're okay in that situation. You know, as long as I'm there, there if somebody comes and tries to take our water, they're going to have a hell of a fight. All of us, I'm, know, I'm, I'm I, sure. We will, you know, the thing about it is uh, we own our water rights. We own, we own good water rights. Right. We have excellent water. And so, I, you know, we have, we have a saleable product for somebody who wants to come here. I don't want to sell water to somebody else. Right. I say if they want, our, if they want to plant a business here, Come here, right, and we'll provide you water. Well, we'll talk about later as I follow my questions. We're going to talk about the losses that we have sure. and what the plans are. Uh, and I did get a little bit off track there. But uh, next question is, uh, Phil, how familiar are you with the city budget? Reasonably uh, f familiar with it. Uh, what questions do you have? Just, just uh, in general. Well, let me let me tell you this. Right now, the city budget is in good shape. Uh, there are only two departments that are struggling, not struggling, but and it's. Timing because of the time but, but of the year. Before you, this might you might be answering this as I as you go along anyway. But I guess th this. Let me interject this. What are the main sources of revenue and expenditures? And because you're probably about to answer that anyway. Right. So if you can incorporate that into. Well, your we've had a just in, and I got this just a couple of weeks ago from uh, uh, our finance director. We have had a 16, 16 point some percent increase of sales tax revenue over two thousand and sixteen. Uh, Nine hundred and some thousand dollars of that was the four percent revenue from marijuana directly. Uh, I forget what the exact dollars amount was, but you sub and it was. I, I'm trying to think here. Was it four million dollars in sales tax revenue? I may be wrong, but you did deduct that. But that nine hundred that nine hundred thousand, and that's our revenue. But there's still a, an increase overall right. in, in in the sales tax revenue. And then, of course, with the sales tax, with the revenue over and above that we are charging the marijuana industry, increases that as well. Okay. But 
all of the departments are in pretty good shape. Our, our, uh, the money that we have to have in reserves is in good shape. I will tell you that. Okay, that's that's excellent to yeah, hear. It is good. A lot of a couple of years ago, that wasn't so. No, I, I know because the the uh, nonprofits used to come and right. and the city was generous. And for a while, I, I don't think it was cut to zero, but it was pretty it darn was, close. It was pretty scarce. It was scarce, and uh, whether a lot of people like it or not, like I said, the marijuana the in industry has helped that along quite a bit, mm -hmm. and been able to bring additional revenue for that four percent that additional uh, sales tax that the marijuana industry is totally separate from that 4% that is direct, directly related. What a lot of people don't understand is that some of the marijuana at the state level is exempt from the, from the marijuana industry. Did you the, know that? The medical, isn't it? Uh, I just read that yesterday. Right. Yeah, it was yeah. interesting to know that yeah. there's, a, there's a certain amount that is not, that's not collected. Well, I, I, in general, I guess it's just good to know. Having lived through the booms and busts here, it's just no good to know that the city, um, unlike the county, is in fairly healthy shape. Here's something that, uh, and I'm not sure if this will come at again later on in, in our interview, but uh, we, up to the end of June, we had $1.2 million of marijuana revenue that we had. Uh, for we, fiscal for 2017. 2017. Okay. Um, we had a retreat. At the retreat, we all threw in ideas as how we could best expend some of this money. Uh, for two or three meetings ago, we expended $1.3 million. But that was only the revenue that we'd received up to the end of June. So what I'd like to see is if, if the projection is close to $2 million, we may have another round of uh, one-time expenditures because that's where, what we want to do with this money. Uh, the thing that I would like to see is not expend all of that money. I would like to keep a couple hundred thousand dollars and put it in a reserve because there may be a time where we may need, uh, I'll give you a good example. Last year we had uh, that sewer break on Main Street that cost us, what was it, eight, uh, 8,000 bucks. We had a water mine, uh, line break that up in, in uh, Valdez that was close to $100,000. So even though that may come from the revenues from that particular, those particular departments, but it will allow us some cushion to be able to draw some money from some of those from this reserve in case it's needed. So that's what I would like to see with some of this marijuana money to build, start building a good reserve down the road. Okay. Um, one of the things that, and this is a kind of a follow-up question that, that uh, had been presented to me um, at that retreat yes. um, you know how people talk and oh, they yeah. said I heard this so and, and I was there I left for a while but I, I watched it when I, I showed mm -hmm. it on the weekends um, for some reason some people grabbed onto the idea that decisions had been made about the marijuana money at the retreat no the only thing we did is that we had a, uh, I had talked to uh, Greg our current city manager, and we started talking about a retreat and what we wanted to expend money on. And I gave him some ideas as to what we could expend money on. At that retreat, we asked all council, are there any other areas that you would like to expend money on? And everybody, we threw all of those in to one pot. We gave it back to uh, the, uh, um, what is that? Uh, to the executive uh, committee. committee that they have it in the city we have in City Hall. Mm -hmm. They took all that the, all of that information, and they came back with a proposal where they felt that the money would be best spent okay. this first round, and that's what we did. And then of course the process came through. We had a couple of discovery. We had a work session on it, I believe, and then they brought it forward to actual the proposal and. Uh, we allocated the money where we, we wanted it to go to. This is one of the reasons I like doing this is because people on the street, they, they, they are right. absolutely certain that something nefarious had happened. And it's like, no, <laughs> I was there. I know <laughs> they didn't do that. And the budget isn't finalized till next that's, month anyway. That's right. And you know what's interesting, and as this kind of office of the subject, a lot of times people think that s decisions are made, uh, two or three people getting behind closed doors. Right. Since I've been there, I've not participated in anything like that. I've not even heard of anything like that right. happening. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, I have actually, myself, uh, one thing that I think a mayor has to do, you have to stay very neutral. And you can't align yourself with any particular side because what you do, you're dead. Right. So that's my feeling. So I, there's so much hearsay that goes on. And maybe some of this stuff happened in years past. I don't know. Right. But as far as I know, I've not seen anything like that happen. Where okay. decisions have been made, what they call behind closed doors. Okay. Let me, let me read this next one. Um, inter industry recruitment is very difficult for rural communities, especially ones where healthcare education and workforce development systems are below par. Again, maybe referring back to the vacancy and stuff that we may have in the future again, what type of businesses would you like to attract to Trinidad? Again, I, you've kind of answered it, but it's just mm -hmm. maybe a slightly different take on it. Well, you know, one of the things that will happen uh, with this space to create program, it'll bring, I think, additional people into town. Uh, some of these people will have different ideas. Uh, they may be able to do some investing. Uh, I would like to see uh, maybe like more clothing outlets, especially for women, because women right now are having to leave Trinidad to do a lot of their clothing. Uh, if you look back, you know, 30, 40 years ago, uh, when I was a kid here in Trinidad, uh, actually, when we come to Trinidad from Weston, there were three shoe shops. We don't have any shoe shops in, uh, in Trinidad. I'm not sure if there are really any more what, if, what you call standalones. They're all built in the Pennies and the Sears right. and the Coles and all these. Can we get somebody like we have right now in uh, the bowels, can we get them to expand uh, their product line and maybe expand their business overall? We do have incentives in the, in the city of Trinidad to allow for people to uh, try to help and expand their business, to grow the industry, and I think to grow their businesses. Uh, so I, those are the type of things that we need to try to, because the more that we can keep people buying locally here, the more the tax revenue the more will people will want to stay here. So, so that made me think of one thing, um, more of a follow-up question. Our, our junior college here, mm -hmm. you know, years ago when the oil and gas was booming, um, uh, I think the Malters and some others, they put in like heavy equipment type of yes. thing. Is there something maybe that we could do with the junior college that would maybe help train some more people here? Is there anything in the works there? There's nothing in the works, but I will tell you this. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the first, when, you first, when I first opened up, that I was on the advisory board for the Trinidad State Junior College for like 18 years uh, for the Building Trades Program. In, uh, in 2001, uh, there was a company out of Denver. Uh, their lab, the company's last name was Phelps. And uh, they would come and talk to us and tell us what was going on in the industry at that level. And the gentleman that came down, he said, you know, you guys have a good program here. However, though, he said, there will come a time where a lot of people will drift away from this industry. And then there will come another time where will, there's going to be a huge need for carpenters out there. Well, we are at that time frame right now. Because if you look around town, because of what I do on a daily basis, uh, they're, I mean, the, 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 Contractors are clamoring. They, they are begging for good, qualified carpenters. They can't find any. And we're not alone here. We're talking, uh, I've talked to people when I go to Denver and other areas. They're having the same problems. They cannot find good, qualified carpenters out there. So that's one area I think that we could, con if they could bring that back, I think they would help. The other thing that I would like to see the college do is years ago, they used to have the, the electronics program. We produced, you know, that college produced some excellent electronics people that did very well, even though they left Trinidad. My brother-in-law was one of them. Right, you know, so you saw that. So I think that that's another area that they could, you know, the college could do very well. And there might be some other things that they could do. I think they can try to, ex and they're working on trying to expand the, the, the uh, gunsmithing program. I, that's been a gem, and that's kind of their gem in the pocket. Right. And it always has been. You know, but there are other areas. Uh, vocational programs. Uh, will never go away. You know, you're always going to need carpenters, you're going to need electricians, you're going to need nurses, you're going to need et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I've always said the educational system is broke, and we all know that. And I, I matter of fact, several years ago, I talked to the, the then lieutenant governor, who I forget what his name was. Garcia? Joe yeah, Garcia. it was Joe Garcia. I talked, had a conversation with him, and I said, what needs to happen with that educational system is that when uh, a person in, let's say, by the time they're 
your freshman in high school. That is when your counselors need to get into gear. And they say, Tom, you know, are you motivated more toward more vocational? You know, is your wife more, is, does she want to do a four-year degree? And start moving them in that direction. Provide those educational opportunities so that they can have vocations or they can go on to a four-year degree if that's what they want to do. They can always change. But I think that's what needs to happen. And I think this, the college here, I think is a prime, as a junior college, I think they're primed to be able to do something like that. Okay, okay. Um, the growth in the tourism economy has been outstanding over the last two years. Do, uh, do you support uh, this new tourism economy? Sure I do, because you know, tourism is a huge industry. I forget what the, uh, I forget what the, the state said. It came out just a couple of weeks ago, but I remember what the billions of dollars it was in the, the, as part of the state economy. We are the first, how, the first stop coming in from the south. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we need to capitalize on that in any way that we possibly can. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I've proposed with, uh, but I think they've taken a different avenue of how they're going to do that. At the retreat, and you might have seen that, is I proposed to have a, uh, to hire an event planner for two years with a marijuana money. I think Jonathan's gonna put it into his economic development. Uh, because I think that one of the problems that we have here is that we don't have a one source where all this information could come into. So we need an event planner because, what, and you've seen this, that there are so many events, major events, that we have here in Trinidad, and they're on the same night. So if we have maybe one person that everybody can send their information to, they could say, well, Tom, maybe it's not a good weekend for you to have your event. Maybe, maybe the following weekend you can do this. So I think that having a, a good event planner will help bring additional resources and they can reach out in marketing and utilize our marketing resources through the, uh, as well, you know, through that we have now. I um, have seen the people that are running the events mm -hmm. suffer from burnout. And, and so I, I think that's an excellent idea. It is. Um, I know like with the rodeo, through the years of doing it, those people were just beat up. Right. Um, and so I think that's an excellent idea to, to help do that and maybe take over some of their, their duties. It, exactly, uh, and that was my whole idea is that we get an event planner, we get our marketing lady that, uh, I forget what, uh, that, that worked with, with uh, in the city hall now, and together the, they, can, they can help uh, work these events and get uh, the uh, volunteers to help them out, you know, so that all the volunteers, because right now the volunteers, a lot of them are suffering from burnout, I believe. Yeah. So I think if we have some, a couple of paid positions and then spread out from there. Okay. Phil, I'm gonna, we're going to take, we're not done with this segment, okay. but I'm about to run out of tape. Okay. And when you're a one-man operation, and I'm sitting here with my broken eyeglass uh, to, to like look up now. there, it's like, okay, that was sticking out the whole time. Uh, we're just going to take sure. a brief, brief break and, sure. and let me change the tape. Sure, go right ahead, sir. Okay, picking up where we left off. That's when you're a one-man band, you gotta play all the instruments. Um, so what we were talking about was tourism mm -hmm. and having um, uh, an event planner. So, and that's really the question that I was gonna ask next is what will you do to continue to promote the tourism industry? And the answer is? You know, Hire that event planner. Right. Put them out on the road, you know, let them plan these events, get all these, get all of the, uh, various organizations that have events to send their information in so that they could say, you know, okay, Tom, like I mentioned earlier, Tom, maybe it's not a good weekend, for, but maybe next weekend would right. be a bit better time for you. Right. Uh, or maybe they can have two events that might uh, complement each other. You know, it works. Right. Is, is it in the budget for next year? Is that one of your tentative plans to do this? Well, the yes, the event planner, as a matter, matter of fact, I think that's where I think Jonathan is going to take that event planner and put it into his budget for next okay. year. Okay, all right. You, you that's, what, that's what I understand, okay. that the, that's what uh, they're going to do. Okay. What I had wanted to do originally, which works out fine the way they want to do it now, was I wanted to take uh, some money from the marijuana money and have like a pilot year, two year program. But I think Jonathan and Greg may have thought, well, this might work, so they're going to put it under their budget, regular okay. budget for next year. Okay, great. Um, the city created an economic development department two years ago. Um, what ideas, again, it's just another way of asking mm -hmm. a similar type question, but what ideas would you have for economic development if elected again? 
Well, economic development, like I said, we just need to continue to pound that pavement. You know, one of the things that I've always, that we've always thought of is that we thought that people should come to us. You can't do that. You know, we need to get Jonathan, and that's one of the things that I'm, I want to try to talk to Greg about is, you know, Jonathan has done a good job of the anti-dilapidation ordinances and some of this other stuff that have come forward. Setting the uh, some of the programs that we have to help businesses that want to locate here and to help some of the existing businesses. Uh, but now I think comes a time that we have to go out and reach out there. It, are there some of these big industry events that they have that we could send them to? I know he participated, I, want, I think, when they had the uh, gunsmithing when I forget it was in Texas or s this Las last Vegas year. maybe yeah the, it was shot last show? Year, the shot show he went to that right. more more places like that that uh, are geared toward economic development to say Trinidad Colorado is here we're willing to we want you to come here those are the type of things I think we need to do we need to reach out to people we can't expect them to come to us anymore well I, I like you how you said that because I think for years the the anticipation was that you know why isn't anybody knocking on our door right. Right. and we have to knock on their door it's kind of the old um, saying, you know, Babe Ruth had the most home runs, but he also had the most strikeouts. That's right. So, uh, or well, asking like out a girl, if you don't ask, you, you're not going to, you know, we were both married, that's right. not, you know, but sure. when you're young and single, it's like, if you don't go ask, you're not going to get a date. That's true. So, uh, well, that's why I said earlier, you know, that, uh, uh, like Gabe said, you know, you might have to hit, you know, hit yeah, 100 strikeouts or 100 strikes, and maybe you might get that one home right. run. Right. Well, we, we certainly both have a passion for this community and, and would like to share it with more people. Staying on this line, and, and we're getting close to, to being through with this segment, but uh, last year the city econo economic development focus was on stabilizing our downtown to create an attractive atmosphere for commercial businesses. We've done rental assistance. We're doing facade redevelopment grants, uh, Main Street patios. We've done an uh, entertainment district. It, it's kind of an obvious question, but... What's your opinion on all those things that we've done? You know, when I when I decided to run for mayor, and I can't remember if I said this, you know, when we had the uh, uh, meet the candidates night, that if Trinidad is going to move forward, we need to take risks, and some of these things are small risks, but the biggest risk that we took was this space to create program, which we can get into more depth if you want to, but all these little risks. One may fail, but you know the, the the downtown district that we have now. We saw what happened in the last month. You know we had the Blues Fest downtown. That was huge. You know people thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, we're going to plan another event, and I think around the, the middle of this next month to kind of celebrate the space to create money that we received. So it's going. To, uh, I am behind all of those programs simply because I was one of the initiators of some of them. Uh, and with Jonathan, you know, the, the, the patios, when he brought that forward, I said, why not? He gave us a good idea because he said other communities are using these. Why not us? Right. We had a lot of complaints about it, but it's working. Right. You know, so those are things that I think, if we don't try something, we're not going to know if it's going to work. Okay. Well, one of the things you mentioned, and you're free to talk about this, is, is what would you like, and you mentioned it before, but talk about space to create. You know, um, that's been an ongoing project for two years now. Uh, last year, I mean, we've had so many people that have participated in trying to get this thing up and running. They've done a lot of traveling, going up north. Uh, we were very lucky that the uh, Governor Hickenlooper uh, designated Trinidad as the demonstration project, which they're wanting, they're now beginning to take this to other areas that in, the, in the state that want to develop a space to create as well. Last year, they went forward to try to get the chapel credits that we just received, and they failed. And the reason why they failed is the, the designation was geared more can, toward... Can, can I interrupt? That? Sure. What are chapel credits? Is the chapel that? credits is what they do. Is uh, These are tax credits. Let's say you are as an investor. They, uh, they're, they're, okay, let's backtrack to this. The, the current amount right now that we have is $10 million. And what they will do is they will go out, they will give these to a bank, and an investor like, let's say, yourself may want to buy some of those tax credits. 
and you will get extra tax credits by investing in those in that money with that money. So it gives you a tax break. Okay. That's the purpose of it. Okay. And this will go on for these people for ten years. Okay. So there's an excellent tax incentive for these people that have excess money. Right. Okay. And that's the purpose behind it. Okay. So uh, this 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 particular project is is huge. I think it's a game changer for Trinidad. Uh, I think that Governor Hickenlooper uh, has a love for Trinidad. I've had some couple of meetings with him. I think his heart is, is in Trinidad from what I'm seeing. Uh, what's been interesting is we are being recognized now with state. Right. We are being recognized because uh, last year, I think it was in like off May or June, uh, we went to Denver. And we went to visit the Office of Economic Development and International Trade. And the people were there saying, what the heck's going on in Trinidad? Why all of a sudden all of this interest in Trinidad? Every time we turn around, we're hearing what's going on in Trinidad. New things are happening. So uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. Uh, the, the, the Space Age to Create program that we have, I think, like I said, it's a game changer. I'm not sure what else I could say. Well, um, it, it made me think of something else, Bill, and you know, g giving credit to Governor Hickenlooper, but um, we probably should give a shout-out to Jay Shimino. You know, Libby, before we get into that, I, I want to say this, is we have one person. There have been two people, actually, with this Space to Create, create program. One has been Marilyn Grisha. Okay. She has been on the ground and traveling and you know, doing a lot of different things for this. The other lady that has done so much work on this is Tara Marshall. Even though she's an employee for the city of Trinidad, but she has spent so much time on the road uh, meeting people, going to Denver, going to other areas in the state, and saying, you know, this is what we're doing with our state, with our space to create program. She has spent a lot of, count I mean, countless hours uh, promoting this. Uh, we have had Michelle Miles, uh, I'm not sure if your wife has been involved with that, but there have been, what's going to be interesting is in the middle of this month, we're going to have, like I said, a, uh, something downtown. And we're going to be inviting people to come down and I want to be able to recognize these people. As a matter of fact, if you read the newspaper yesterday, we tried, I, I hopefully we didn't miss anybody. Of all of the people that were the major contributors of the people that have really tried to help move that program along. Right. So that has, has been very important. Uh, you asked about Jay Chimino. A lot of people have asked me, because I'm friends with him. Right. A lot of people have asked me, what does he know that we, that we don't know? About six or eight months ago, I periodically when I go to Springs, I stop and I see him. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I said, people are asking me this question. What do you know that people don't know? He says, Phil, I am from Trinidad. I love that community. My heart is there. He said, and I want to see it flourish like it used to be. You know, uh, I think he is putting so much time and energy into this community that will never be repaid to him. Right. Uh, a lot of people may have differences of opinion, but who else has ever done this? Who else has ever stuck? The projection is that when he's said and done, he will probably maybe him and some investors will have invested over a hundred million dollars in Trinidad. Oh my. Where else are we going to get that? Well, I, I'm biased. If, uh, my wife and I had the newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, we lost it. I, I'm not ashamed of that. Mm -hmm. um, we've lost a lot of good people from the community, Danielson sure. Design and, and other mm -hmm. businesses. Um, and I've got to give him a shout out. If it wasn't for Jay, I probably wouldn't be here right now. And he um, was interviewing Paula for a job at Mount Carmel, and uh, they wanted her to do a marketing job, and he was the last interview, and when it got to the end, he's like, no, you're going to sell cars. And <laughs> at one point last week, she was number one in the whole, whole oh, nice. um, com of all 17 dealerships. Oh, really? That's nice. You know, and they, in the larger dealerships, I'm getting off track here a little bit, but that's okay. It's my program. I can do what I want. Um, that's, a, that's a big thing for us. Mm. And... and her commute to work is going to be 700 steps right over here. Yeah, that's nice. um, and a lot of people don't know this. Um, you probably do, but Jay's dad owned his funeral home back in the 50s. Yeah. 
and so he has a, a little bit of a, a tie here too. Okay. So I, I, I'm uh, ecstatic about what he's done. Mm -hmm. And I know I was, at, I was at with Paula in one of their business meetings in January or February, and at that point they said they'd spent over $30 million. And they're a long, they were a long way from being done and still. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. got a long way so. to go. You know, let me get, I, you know, Jay is truly an exception to what one person will, is willing to do to a community like this. I met a gentleman that from Trinidad uh, a couple of months back. And he's made a lot of money as well. Very well known, lives in Colorado yet. And I went up to him and I asked him, would you be willing to invest in Trinidad? He actually shrugged me off. Really? Yes. Wow. He said, and actually, I'm not going to say this, but yeah. it, but it, there was someone else that was with me that we both asked. Right. And he basically said no. Yeah. And well. it's sad that he didn't have that same love of our community right. as Jay, or even anything close. Right. To try to do something for it, and I think this gentleman would have the could have the capability of doing something locally. Well, uh, all we do have to do is walk outside here and look across, and we can see the dealership. Exactly. And, and that's just one of many projects. Yes. So, good job, Jay. And we did get off a little bit track, but it's my program, so I can do what I want. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so the next question, um, and, and we did talk about this a, a, a minute ago or two, but uh, where should the, the marijuana money be spent? You know, like I said, we had one round of that $1.3 million that we expended for one-time expenditures. We need to look at, see, what areas are going to impact the community the most. There are some needs that we have done. One of the things, that, for like for instance, Monument Lake, we're going to expend that money for uh, uh, a new bathroom facility, which, uh, last, like last night, you said you had wanted to be there, but you couldn't be there. Right. But I, for I forgot. You forgot. I forgot. Okay. One, you forgot. <laughs> okay. One, sure. you know, first time in many, many years. But one of the reasons why some people are shying away from Monument Lake is because of the bath problem. So if we put money into that bath, I mean, we'll get a better turnout up there. Right. Uh, we have uh, a lot. This is something that some people don't understand. They, they, they're angry at the money that we're expending on the uh, uh, the dog park or the dog pound or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and they're upset. Why are you putting money toward that? They don't understand that a community, the city of Trinidad, I'm not sure about other communities, but it is something that we have to provide. If there's not a, if we want to or we don't want to. Uh, we have to provide that facility. And right now, the facility that they're in is in such bad shape, they need to get out of there. Uh, we had, they originally had wanted to build a new facility up on Santa Fe Trail, but the cost was so excessive that they couldn't come up with the funding. So then we came back over here. Then they want, then we were talking about putting them at the old Hughes lumber yard, but that's not a prime area either because there's other businesses around there. And the big problem with that is that if we if they go in there, it's only a temporary solution. So if you put dogs and cats and other animals in there, when they leave there, will that building be? Could it be used for anything else? Because right. of you know the smell and the urines and all this other stuff that go along with that type of a facility. So by law, we have to provide a facility that. You know, we can house the animals. So I, did, I didn't know that. There's yes. really a law that we the have to municipality have has to that provide? We, that we have to provide. That is part of our duty, one of our duties. As uh, a, as uh, a statewide type of? I don't know if it's a statewide thing or, or if it's something that we've adopted. That's something I'm not sure on. Okay. You, you know, literally nobody lives closer to Noah's than I do, and right. my wife and my mother. Um, and it's not, it's not a problem. You oh. know, we, occasionally we hear them when mm -hmm. they go to feed them in the morning, but no smell. No right. noise. There's no other wild animals mm -hmm. around there. It, it's 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 not a problem. You know, like I said, you know, we that's just a couple of examples of uh, one of the things that I proposed, and I never. And it actually, people said thank you for it. Uh, right at the end, that was. I think it was like three or four days uh, before we had the meeting to approve those expenditures. Uh, that hurricane down in uh, Houston happened, and I thought. You know, we get a lot of people up here from Texas. I think it's only right that we try to give them that issue some money. So I proposed five thousand dollars to give to the Houston uh, uh, 
to give them money to, relief, so, yeah. to for the relief fund. Yeah. So they, you know, the council approved it. So that, w but that was an exception as far as that goes. But there are other things that I think that uh, I want to propose, and we're thinking about it. I originally thought with the marijuana money to take and uh, cut down some of the debt that we have in in Trinidad. Well, this first round, we went ahead and expended the money to some of these other areas. But if we do have a good second round, we may want to look at uh, paying down some debt. You know, we have some uh, police vehicles. Uh, we have the, well, the trolley is, is from the tourism board. We have the, um, what else? So we have a new street sweeper out there. We have a new uh, fire department piece of equipment. So maybe those areas that maybe we can cut back. One area that I, I do want to see is that we still owe one more year uh, for the sewer plant because it was a bond that was taken out, what is it, 15 years ago or whatever? And so we have to, we, we've been paying like 300000 or 400000 each year is what it costs us. So we have one year left to pay. So if we have enough revenue, we may want to pay off that debt. So that so if we can relieve some debt in that area, even though we're in pretty good shape, it'll give us that much more cushion to be able to put it to the general fund. You know, I remember that being an issue about ten years ago. And it's like, oh, we have a whole another ten years. Those ten years are gone. It's They're almost gone. over. So yeah, there's like one year left. I think in 2018 we will we will retire that debt. Okay. Next question I'm going to read to: Water losses, 40 percent from the treatment to delivery. Uh, what plans are in place to repair, and how can we not fall behind again? Okay. That is a really, really tough subject uh, to deal with. Uh, and there I'm going back to our previous city manager. When I got on, I said, okay, what are we looking at as far as infrastructure? Because it is a major issue that we have here. To do everything that we would need to do in Trinidad, it costs about $100 million. That's all infrastructure. We're talking about sewer. We're talking about water, electrical, no, no, that wasn't electrical. Water, sewer, gas, uh, new gas lines, um, and other things. Uh, so anyway, uh, the problem is, is it's this, what we're trying to do now should have been started 20, 25 years ago. The average life of a water line system or any system is about 50 years. The last time anything was done with water was like 19, 60 some I, I can't remember if I was a kid because matter of fact I was living in Weston at the time and they ran a new water line at that time so we're well beyond the lifetime of that main trunk line and some of our water mains our water area or water facility or water lines exceed that close to 100 years we w they did a retreat up at Monument Lake mm -hmm. and I think it was before you were elected yes probably like Two years the year ago. before, right. Right. And, and uh, as I recall, they had Gabe England put in a plan, you know, that was mm -hmm. 15, 20, 25 years right. to, to do that. Is that still, is it, is it being implemented? What we have to do, as a matter of fact, right now we have a, uh, a $3 million uh, DOLA match. We had to come up with $1.5 million, and DOLA gave us $1.5 million. And what we're doing is we're going to slip line, as a matter of fact, that I can't remember if we went, I think we already went out to bid on that. And they're going to slip line the main, the sewer main on Main Street from Oak Street up down to High Street. We're going to go from uh, all the way up to Third Street for the sewer as well. Uh, last meeting, uh, we approved uh, the engineering for the water uh, in those areas. That is the oldest part of Trinidad. So that's $3 million. And of course, we'll do the sewer, we'll do the water, we'll probably have to do what gas have to get done and probably end up paving or doing something different to the roads. But then we need to move on to the next phase, maybe the next oldest part of town. So this is going to take many years beyond my time being on council. I hope council has the, uh, the initiative to stay on that to year after year and hopefully we'll have money because we can't generate that much money locally here. We need to rely on DOLA and other grants to help us, to, even though we have to come up with matches. But we need to be able to start setting aside money so with that, when that revenue stream is available, we have that money to match so that we can do these in sections in Trinidad. 
the waterline main coming from the north from our water treatment facility to Trinidad, the estimated cost is about fifteen million dollars just on that one. Ouch. Yeah. So, uh, uh, quick question: slip lining. I'm assuming that means that you keep the existing pipe in place and put something just on the inside. What of they it. do is they go in and kind of like I think what they do is they real kind of rotor root out the inside because you know it gets pretty scaly and all that. No, I've seen inside. the calcification, whatever yeah. they call it. And it's like bad in, arteries. Yeah, and they go in and they kind of remove that to kind of help fix it up, I believe. And then what they do is they take and they put this like large inner tube inside. They blow it up somehow and, and it expands and it, it creates a whole new pipe inside of the pipe that's there. Okay. So it extends the life. If we were to take and, and have to dig up the main street line here, we would all get hung yeah. because of the cost and not the cost but the time. Right. Because uh, the sewer main here, I think, is like 18 feet deep. Oh, ouch. Ouch. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, moving, moving along, if I'd have been there last night, I'd know the answer to this. But what's the solution for Monument Lake? You know, it was a good, a good conversation. I wish the two other people that had put in uh, uh, for it would have been there because that would have been interesting to hear what they had to say. Uh, we have had a couple of interesting proposals, and uh, we're looking at... It looks like they really want to do like three-year plan, but the two people there will actually, if it works out for them, that they would like to extend that even further if they possibly can. They might want to go out 10 years, maybe 20 years. They might want to go out further. One of them said, I'm, he was like 50 years old, he said, I'd like to finish my term out of working operating the lake, which is maybe another 20 or 30 years. Uh, Monument Lake, is, like I said, we all recognize that it's a gem. Uh, the city of Trinidad just does not have the revenue to spend to do what we have to do. So we need to have someone that operates it that will continue to bring that additional revenue in so that maybe we can at least get taxes off of it to possibly do something additional with the lake. Um, I can't remember for sure if the money that's generated is taxed at Four percent up there, or is it two point nine percent? I'm not sure because of the game right. parsley in the county. I am not really sure about that. But we need to find someone who really wants to do something with the lake to make it more attractive. Because we know that the bath facility is in sorry shape. That's why they've expended that money to try to build a new facility up there. We need someone to really be able to do something with the uh, a dining area. Uh, some of those uh, cabins need to be upgraded. Uh, there was talk about uh, bringing in possibly Wi-Fi so that people can want to have Wi-Fi, uh, maybe doing something for adults uh, that want to stay there, uh, make it look more attractive to them so that maybe there's some programs for the two, three days that they're there. Um, so there's, I think there's a lot of possibilities, but we need to have the right management company in there so that they kind of, instead of looking at it this way, they kind of open their, you know, they need to look at a little broader view. Right. Well, what I they apologize need to do. in all these years, I could count on one hand the number of meetings I missed. Oh. It just slipped. It was one of those. Because <laughs> I was supposed to interview Anthony Matei at the time. He said, Tom, I can't be there because we're probably going to be at city council. And then until Mr. Bonato I interviewed him this morning, said, where were you? And I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so my apologies. That's okay. I, I, I want people to be able, you know, and kudos to the reporters or whatever, but it's one thing to read about. It's another thing to watch the, what yeah. people are saying and doing. But Monument Lake, I said, I, I, you know, seeing it when I was a kid versus what it is today, right. it's, it, it is, to me it's saddening because yeah. I remember when it was at its peak, you know, when I was a little kid living up right. there. And, and the it, monument collapsed, but 10, 15 years ago or whatever, yeah. 20? Yeah. A while ago. Last question in this segment. Okay. Um, through the years, I've filmed um, county and city meetings. Um, they've had many of the years uh, have occurred. Um, and, and you weren't a part of this, so maybe this isn't a completely fair question, but I think you can still add something to this. What successes, that's maybe not a fair question to you, what do you see coming down in the future? Because I don't know that you guys have had any joint meetings since you were elected. You've only been on here, what, a year and a half. We proposed, and we actually had two meetings at the college with the county okay. commissioners. The first meeting uh, 
one of the commissioners sat with us, or two of them actually sat with us at the table. We had a long table. I, I was at that one. I remember. Uh, now I remember. And we okay. had, you know, we asked, got questions from, you know, from the audience. Then we had a second meeting, and we could not get the cares commissioners at that time to sit with us at the front table, which to me was very discouraging. Because right. to me that told me that I'm not sure if they just didn't be want to be part of it or because they were there, but they would not sit at the head table with us. The city and the county, they need to cooperate. We need to have cooperation. They need to help us. We need to be able to help them. They're struggling. We are limited to what we could do to help them. This last year, we gave the district attorney fifty thousand uh, dollars. He's asked us again for another fifty thousand for next year, which probably will do because a lot of what he does impacts us locally here. But it's essential because even though the city of Trinidad is here, county is we're in the, we're in the county, so if we can't work together, uh, we're not doing a complete job for all the constituents of our entire Los Angeles County. But last question before I wrap this up. Because people what are always asking, excuse right. me, but people are asking, why aren't you guys working together? Well, that's what I say. Why do you think that is? Why do you, is it, is, I mean, it, I guess it goes back a little. What do you think the reason is? <sighs> it's probably not the decision. Okay, all right. I, I, we all speculate, yeah. but, but um, it's just unfortunate because really, Regardless, we really all live in the same community. And there's, I, I really do believe that we have new, two new uh, commissioners. Right. And I think there's opportunity there. Okay. I really do believe that. And I do want to, if I'm elected again, I do want to reach out to them and say, let's sit down to their chair and me as mayor and say, okay, how do we start this dialogue for the benefit of everybody in this county? Okay. All right. Bill, um, we're going to take a short break okay. and we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tom Murphy and this is Trinidad Now on T2 TV. Thank you.